good morning everyone so myself dr sakti prasad now today i'm going to discuss the method of maximum likelihood estimation now in these lectures we have covered the introduction on the maximum likelihood estimation likelihood function likelihood equation and find the maximum likelihood estimate for the parameter lambda of a poisson distribution on the basis of sample size and now considering x1 x2 be the random sample of size n with the normal distributions and find the maximum likelihood estimate for the parameter mu when sigma square is known for sigma square when mu is known so now we go for the outlines of my lectures therefore the introduction of the maximum likelihood estimation first we need for the what is the meaning of estimation sometimes we may have no information about a parameter of the population by going through the statistical analysis of the samples drawn from the population we can estimate the values of the parameter this process is called estimation and lot of methods for a estimations but now here we have concentrate only for the maximum likelihood estimation so we go for the introductions on maximum likelihood estimation from a th theoretical point of view the most general method of estimation known is the method of maximum likelihood estimation we can say that mle which was initially formulated by professor c f c f goss but as a general method of estimation was first introduced by the professor r f fisher and later on developed by him in a series of papers so now we start for the likelihood functions so first we need to write let consider x1 x2 dot dot xn be the random sample of size n from the population with the densities function or probability mass function x comma theta for theta is a unknown parameter and for all theta belongs to the parametric space then we write the likelihood function of the sample's values x1 x2 dot dot xn usually denoted by and define is equal to l is equal to l of theta is equal to f of x1 comma theta for the x1 dot means into f of x2 comma theta dot 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 into f of xn comma theta is equal to write in a product form f of xi comma theta i is equal to 1 to n this is the equation number 1 and now we have to check the unknown how to find the unknown functions now the in a method is a maximum likelihood means that we can use the principle of maximum likelihood estimate consist in finding an estimator for the unknown parameter theta here is the unknown parameter is theta means that we go for the theta and which maximize the likelihood function maximize the likelihood function for variation in the parameters means we want to find theta cap theta cap here means that the theta is a known parameters so now we need to check uh, partial derivative of del l by del theta is equal to 0 and second derivative of l with respect to theta less than 0 and more simplifications we can write here del l by del theta is equal to 0 we can write here 1 by l del l by del theta is equal to 0 so now after that we can write 1 by l del l by del theta we can write up del of log l by del theta is equal to 0 and second derivative of log l by del theta square is less than 0 means this equation is known as the likelihood equations after that equating 0 it gives the value in a theta so here with the this equation is known as the likelihood equations and now theta is equal to theta cap which is the mix which is the maximum likelihood estimate of theta so now in note in a note to get the mle it is a derived the assumption that the first and second order derivative must exist this is the conditions for the mle so now we go for the properties of mle mle exist 
it is most efficient in class of such estimators. If a sufficient estimator exists, it is a function of the maximum likelihood estimator. MLEs are consistent. MLE for a parameter need not be unique. MLE need not be necessarily be unbiased. MLE may not be informally minimum variance unbiased estimators. Now here we have seen that the efficient, sufficiency, consistent, unbiasedness, these are the desired properties of the estimator. But here I am not discussing the estimators. Here I am discuss only focus on the maximum likelihood estimator or estimation. So now we go for the example. Find the maximum likelihood estimate for the parameter lambda of a Poisson distribution on the basis of the sample size. So solution is x1, we take x1, x2 dot dot xn be the random sample of size n with the Poisson distribution with parameter is lambda. That's why Poisson distribution is a discrete. That's why we can write the probability mass function p of a capital X equal to a small x equal to e to the power lambda lambda to the power x by factorial x and x lies between 0 1 2 dot and now in this we can write is the f of x comma lambda why lambda here lambda is the unknown parameters so now we first we write the likelihood function likelihood function is what l is equal to product of f of x i comma lambda and now this the x can be replaced by x i so that's we can write here e to the power lambda lambda to the power x i by xi factorials. Now after that we can simplify it e to the power lambda lambda to the power x1 by x1 factorial dot e to the power lambda lambda to the power x2 by x2 factorial dot 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 e to the power in a last term nth term e to the power lambda minus lambda lambda to the power xn by xn factorial. Now here we have seen that e to the power lambda is coming n times and this part is constant. So we can write here e to the power minus lambda to the power n and lambda to the power lambda base same power must be add here. Let lambda is equal to lambda to the power x1 plus x2 plus dot dot xn. And now in denominator part we can write here x1 factorial dot in dot means into x2 factorial into dot 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 into xn factorials now after that in a simplified form we can write e to the power minus in lambda and lambda to the power summation of xi and now in denominator part we can write in the product of xi factorials so after that we in a formula in, in a formula here we have seen that we take the log l so that's why we go for the log l here so need for the l can be expressed in the form of xi and after that we go for the log l taking the log on both side log l and log e to the power n lambda plus log lambda to the power xi minus log product of xi factorial so after that we simplify here log l is equal to minus n lambda plus summation of xi here in summation of xi log lambda minus log product of xi factorial after that we find the partial derivative with respect to lambda and equating to zero we get the values is here we differentiate partially with respect to lambda it is coming minus n plus summation of xi and log l can be converted by into partially differentiate it is coming 1 by lambda and these values are constant we take the 0 and here is equating this values equal to 0 we come in this form 1 by lambda summation of xi equal to n and now our target to find the lambda here lambda we can write in this equation can be written in the form of lambda is equal to 1 by n summation of xi and this is what this is for the sample mean and we can write here the lambda cap is equal to x bar but in a MLE the first derivative and second derivative must exist that's why we need to check the second derivative is less than 0 or not 
second derivative again we partially derivative second derivative with respect to log l second derivatives of this equation with respect to lambda then it is coming minus 1 by lambda square summation of xi less than 0 so that's why we can say that x bar is a MLE maximum likelihood estimate of lambda maximum likelihood estimate of lambda so now we go for the next example here the next example is x1 x2 dot dot xn be the random sample with the normal distribution with a parameter mu and sigma square and find the maximum likelihood estimate of the parameters mu when sigma square is known and second is sigma square when mu is known so now we go for the solution here is the normal distribution so just we write the pdf probability densities function a probability 1 by sigma under root 2 pi e to the power 1 by 2 bracketed x minus mu by sigma whole square and x lies between minus infinity to plus infinity and mu lies between minus infinity to plus infinity and sigma is greater than 0 and here we have write the f of x comma mu comma sigma square and a previous you have seen that here we have write the f of x comma lambda but lambda can be replaced in this question is mu and sigma square because here is the two parameter mu and sigma square then we write for the likelihood function l is equal to product of f of xi comma mu comma sigma square now in this pdf we can x is replaced by xi that's why we can write here product of i is equal to 1 to n 1 by sigma under root 2 pi e to the power minus half bracketed xi minus mu by sigma whole square now after that we simplification starts we have considered at mu is equal to theta 1 and sigma square is equal to theta 2 why we take the theta 1 and theta 2 because is uh, simplifications because in this questions we estimate the first we mu and second is a sigma square so here we easy to partial differentiate that's why we have taken the theta 1 is equal to mu is equal to theta 1 and sigma square is equal to theta 2 so after that we can write in the form of this l of theta 1 comma theta 2 and product of f of xi comma theta 1 comma theta 2 and product of i is equal to 1 to n 1 by under root theta 2 2 pi e to the power minus half bracketed xi minus theta 1 ka whole square by sigma square is what sigma square is theta 2 and after that we can write in this simplify form here 1 by under root theta 2 2 pi e to the power minus half x1 minus theta 1 ka whole square by theta 2 into 1 by under root theta 2 2 pi e to the power minus half minus half bracketed x2 minus theta x2 minus theta 1 ka whole square by theta 2 dot 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 into 1 by under root theta 2 2 pi e to the power minus half into xn minus theta 1 ka whole square by theta 2 so now here we have seen that this term 1 by under root theta 2 2 pi is coming on n times and this part is constant that's why we can write here that's why we can write here l theta 1 comma theta 2 we can write here 1 by under root theta 2 2 pi whole to the power n and e to the power 1 by 2 theta 2 summation of xi minus theta 1 whole square so now we can simplify 2 pi we can write this 2 pi theta 2 to the power minus n by 2 we take the outside of root and e to the power minus 1 by theta 2 into summation of xi minus theta 1 ka whole square and after that taking the log on both sides so that is coming what log l is equal to minus n by 2 log 2 pi plus log theta 2 minus 1 by 2 theta 2 summation xi minus theta 1 ka whole square this is the equation number 2 so now we need to 
different partially differentiate with respect to first theta one because in a first question we find the maximum likelihood for the parameter mu and we have considered the mu as a theta one that's why we can partially differentiate with respect to theta one and equating zero that is coming what minus one by theta two summation of summation of two bracketed xi minus theta one into well, partial differentiate values of minus theta one is coming minus one is equal to zero here we differentiate these values and these values are zero and after that we go for this this is a constant we take constant and now it a partially differentiated two bracketed xi minus theta one into minus one is equal to zero so now here we have simplify it is coming theta one is equal to one by n summation of xi so now we need to write that theta one cap is equal to mu one cap, mu mu cap is equal to x bar this is the equation number three so now we go for the first we need to check the second derivative is hold or not so after differentiate partially second order derivative with respect to theta one that is coming is less than zero in the light of three and four we can say that x bar is a mle for mu this is the first part of this question is covered now we go for the next part sigma square of the normal distribution with mu is known so now here partially differentiate the equation 2 with respect to theta 2 so now equation 2 is this log of l theta 1 comma theta 2 so here this equation equation 2 can partially differentiate with respect to theta 2 it is coming what equating 0 also so it is coming minus n by 2 theta 2 plus 1 by 2 theta 2 square summation of xi minus theta 1 square here is coming in the values of theta 2 theta 2 is coming 1 by n summation of xi minus theta 1 and theta 1 we have already defined in previous so it is coming on the x bar that's we can theta 1 can be replaced in the form of x bar means that it is coming theta 2 cap is equal to sigma 2 cap is equal to 1 by n summation of xi minus x bar square this is the equation number 5 so now this is what this is the variance for variance of x so now we move for the second order derivative just we check these values are coming less than 0 so in the light of 5 and 6 we can say that 1 by n summation i is equal to 1 to n bracketed xi minus x bar cohol square is a mle of sigma square so this is the answer for this question so thank you for watching my video so please like comment and subscribe my channel